Hello guys, welcome to this afternoon webinar. My name is Theo, for those who don't know me yet, and I'm here to introduce you Mr. Jens. He will join in a while and he will take over and he will walk you through the today's uh, subject. In the meantime, just allow me to share uh, my screen with you guys and uh, let you know about the channels we have, the social media channels. This is the Telegram where we post and um, inform you about what's going on on a daily basis with the markets, with the events we have. So I will just send it to you in the chat box below. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel, to the Telegram channel. Also, we have the Instagram channel. Uh, we put a lot of reels and stories on a daily basis, and uh, you can really get informed about so, so many important stuff about the market, especially the 30 seconds uh, market updates we put every Wednesday. It's going to give you a very, very good update about what's going on. So I share the Instagram channel with you. And the most important, in my opinion, is the YouTube channel. Please make sure you subscribe on the YouTube and you like the video, especially uh, the videos that Jens is doing and, uh, and the other uh, educators, the other traders because we really put significant amount of, uh, of effort to bring this conduct to you uh, and to be in that short time period with all this value uh, to gain. If you scroll down a little bit, you will see Trading Spotlight. And here you can find all the webinars Jens is uh, doing. Okay. And please make sure you subscribe on the live trading events we do on a daily basis at 7.30 London time, 30 minutes. If we, we go through the market, uh, the market charts and we do analysis. Jens, hello. Welcome to your webinar. <laughs> hello, Theo. Nice to, to be here. Fantastic, fantastic to have you with us. So I will, uh, I see a lot of people, they join and that's brilliant. It means they find the webinar so, so uh, interesting, important and valuable to them. And that's awesome. Jens, just give me a sec to, uh, to sort this out. Yep, yeah, just one sec, please, to find it here. Okay. Try if so, you can. I think okay, I can perfect. Screen. Okay, perfect. So, guys, I leave you with the expert Yen, and looking forward to see you on the live trading sessions. Thank you. <laughs> so, hello and uh, welcome everyone to today's uh, webinar. You can already read it here in the first slide. Uh, it will be about the four most important. I'm not sure if um, everyone will agree, but let me just take these off. Um, if everyone will agree. Most of the people certainly will, but um, probably it would have been better to call it my for most important Forex economic indicators. Um, and um, I will present these to you. Uh, we want to dig deeper into why they are important. Um, some of them, you will already um, 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 see it, that, that it's um, also in the current market environment, why um, many, especially professional traders, some um, say we really prefer the current uh, volatility and um, what's driving current um, market volatility. Well, one of, or several of these economic indicators that play a very important role. Sometimes they are more in play than um, um, at other times. <clears throat> And it's not just that I will present them to you, but also um, we will give some some uh, details on how to interpret them, um, how to read them, why they're 
in the current environment, especially important. And what's probably more important, um, also how to um, get the uh, economic data straight into your trading platform, your MetaTrader 4 or 5, uh, with the so-called Supreme add-on, which you can download for free on the website um, at Admirals. And um, it's a very nice tool because sometimes you probably um, are surprised to see a market is spiking higher or lower. I mean, just several minutes ago, I'm not really sure where we stand right now, but um, there is now at this very moment, there is um, um, a speech with uh, Vladimir Putin um, on the uh, referendums, I think, they, which were held uh, in, in the eastern part of Ukraine, annexation. I'm not really sure what, uh, what, the, what the topic is, but certainly it will be something around uh, Ukraine. And this is certainly something which is not included. Um, and you see spikes on the upside and downside. But most of the time, if there is an impulse from an economic event, um, then you sometimes look at the chart and just think, well, why is the market moving right now? And there's a great indicator, the Supreme add-on, which um, you can include in your chart. And then you have um, some, some vertical lines, which will directly show you uh, the news events straight in your trading platform. So, which is probably um, very, very useful, especially for those um, who not check out or who are more, let's say, the scalping mode to some extent, probably that's a very good way to put it. Um, analytical traders who need more time to think let's say um they they are more or they, they are yeah they, they're probably they, they have more time uh, there's probably a higher time frame they are looking at um this is not 100 but very close to it i think and so long thing short um you will certainly enjoy what i will present to you and this little gimmick which you can then directly display in your chart will certainly hopefully bring your trading to the next level. But first of all, um, or respectively, well, I don't need to talk about that much about Admirals, I think, because um, Theo already made the whole introduction. Um, I think everything um, um, important around this topic was already said from, from, from Theo. So one world, one broker, let's dive directly deep into today's agenda and then take it from there. So first of all, um, here's a look at the agenda and you can already see which data is of high importance right now. And um, again, it's it's not just that, that I will um, um, present this data to you now, um, but what I also wanna do is um, I want to give you my current overview on um, how I interpret, the, interpret these 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 um, data points and facts and why they are of importance for us. First of all, we want to have a look at GDP respect to the growth rate. That will be a very interesting print, in fact, um, which we will which will be delivered something like I'm, I'm not really sure, but I think three weeks from now or so. I think at the end of October we'll get a print here for Q3, um, and after two. Um, um, uh, quarters of, of negative economic growth or negative GDP print, so an economic contraction, uh, we have a technical um, um, recession, in fact. So um, there's a simple rule of thumb, which says if we have two quarters of uh, negative um, um, GDP prints, <clears throat> quarter on quarter, then we get um, or we have um, a technical recession, which is then certainly um, affecting the next point here, the next bullet point, interest rate decisions, respectively, um, the, the, the monetary policy you can expect from a central bank um, which she will go after. Um, we we'll also, by the way, um, introduce you, or I will introduce you to a concept. You probably have wondered several times um, why or where do um, central bankers, I mean, certainly based on uh, economic projections, but isn't there some kind of a formula they can use here um, um, to find out what's the right, um, what's the right interest rate level right now in the current environment. And there's in fact a rule, which is called the Taylor rule. And so this is something I will introduce to you. So this is probably a good rule of thumb and probably we'll hear about this because um, especially the ECB is lagging here um, dramatically after um, or has lagged for some time. And this is certainly one of the reasons why inflation is currently um, 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 going berserk, let's say, um, on the upside. The same is also true for other central banks, certainly. But um, in our case, especially the ECB plays a very important role. We'll also look certainly at the employment numbers, respectively unemployment rate, something uh, you won't be surprised about because um, non-farm payrolls is also one of the events we certainly will cover next week, next time, in fact, um, and where we would dig deeper into this and um, 
So we can use all the information around this already to uh, prepare well for, for next week. And then inflation rate. Right now, well, also no, no, big, no big surprise that inflation is a very, very important topic, has always been and is right now certainly a very big issue, issue respectively topic and fact. And what this is and how to interpret it and what to make out of this, how it affects monetary policy, the second bullet point interest rate decisions are also something we will dig deeper into. And then at the end, you can already see the Admiral Markets Supreme add-on, the um, economic calendar um, top. In fact, um, I have here now GDP growth rate, but before, before, um, um, first of all, I'd like to start here uh, with the economic calendar first, where you find this data, and I will also dig deeper into this right now, because yesterday there was a GDP print, in fact, a finalized GDP print, so there's usually, um, um, yeah, how can I say that, this is like, it's not measurements, well, or it's, uh, yeah, expectations to some extent. Well, there's there's um, um, three releases. So the first release is usually the one you can expect at the um, um, uh, um, end of the month following the last quarter on which um, uh, the GDP data you will receive. Then the next month, one month later, you get a second estimate, in fact, and then there's a final estimate. And this one was released, in fact, yesterday. And um, so first of all, let's let's here have a look at the economic calendar. And I also want to show you where you can download the Supreme add-on. But first of all, let's let's start with the, with the Forex calendar. So you'll find it here via the analytics tab, and there is the Forex calendar. And then you get this um, um, nice website here. Um, so first of all, I'm sitting in Berlin in Germany, so I can or I will now here do the following, I will say okay I will have a time, which is Europe Berlin in fact this affects here this this column. Um, I'm then interested now in data from yesterday and from today. So then you have also the data from yesterday, but now you can also see that there's, for example, uh, New Zealand. I don't even know what country this is. In fact, um, this seems to be, is this Kuwait? I'm not really sure. KWD? I don't know. Um, whatever. So um, this is obviously data, which is probably not that of interest um, for us. So that's one of the reasons why we have to here filter the data. And what we want to look at, um, just for illustration purposes, is uh, Euro and the US area here in this case. So we, we check these two um, boxes here, and then we click on apply filter. We close this. And then you can see now you have only Euro and USD and you have all the data here with um, 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 different impact points, let's call them. So it's low impact, it's green. Then you have the um, um, yellow impact, which is like medium impact. And the red one is one which you um, expect to be of high importance. It's a high importance event. So in the morning, for example, Eurozone, there was uh, the inflation uh, print here, 10% year on year for the last month, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just see. So yeah, and let me just think about this. So it's no, it's for September, <laughs> yeah, so clear. Um, this is some September data. Unemployment rate, um, as you can see here, also high um, 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 importance of high importance. Now, interesting thing. Now let's go back to yesterday on the GDP print. Um, there you can see it's only having two data um, or importance points, let's say. It's a medium, um, 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 medium relevance. And you probably wonder why, because this is a, big important number, but you can see it here, it's final. So final says we already knew in which direction this print um, will come out. And uh, so that being said, it decreases the importance of the of the news event. But this is something you, you find here in this in this um, um, calendar. So check it out yourself. I probably, this is a little too much. Let's like an introduction so that you know, this is where you can find here the time um, um, column. Then you can also say, well, I want to, for example, explain or don't want to see it in, in English, but in Espanol, Portuguese, and first as Deutsch, and so German, and so on and so forth. Um, whatever you prefer, there you have the time, then you can just update it. You can filter um, whichever currency, especially you're trading. So if you're trading dollar JPY, you probably won't look at Euro data, but you will look at USD um, or US data and Japanese data, for example. Um, filter it really nicely, and then you get all the information around economic events um, being displayed. Here. Here directly on the website. So this is one, one way to find out which data um, points you have to expect for the day. Um, also, you will or you have a chance to display these um, in your trading um, platform. And therefore, you head over to platforms and there you can find the MetaTrader Supreme Edition. So here, this tab, 
um, click on it and there you can see it. Free download for MT5, free download for MT4, depends on which um, MT um, meter trader you're using. And now you see, I'm not really sure if it's displayed here. Tick chart trader, stay connected, indicator package, um, mini chart. Okay, no, it's not It's not displayed here. It's just, just let's say, the mini terminal or trade terminal, for example. But within this, you will find um, a tab which reads economic calendar and which you can um, 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 directly include in your chart then and have all the relevant um, um, data, which is of importance being displayed directly in your chart. I will show you um, a chart a little later on, but now let's dig deeper into GDP growth rate first and then take it from there. So um, what is GDP growth rate? So when we talk about GDP or growth rate, um, then we usually look at the economic growth, which is represented by the economy or in the economic indicator called GDP, which is a short for gross domestic product. And um, what's doing is, in fact, it's, it's calculating the value of production for any country during a specific period of time. So usually we'll, you will see a GDP print, which reads Q on Q, Q O Q, or Y O Y. Um, and then that means that you that you have um, um, a data set which you calculate on a quarterly basis, but it depends on um, um, wh where you compare it to. So if you compare, for example, to uh, the same period one year ago, you look at it from a Y or Y perspective. If you compare it um, um, where you put it in comparison to the quarter before, then you look at it from a Q or Q perspective. And um, so usually each country looks for bigger growth respectively increasing its GDP over time. Um, and this is right now one of the reasons why, for example, the euro is uh, crashing, simply speaking. Why? Well, because of the backbone of the euro is the German economy. Um, that has always been the case, and um, um, that was, in fact, the business model. So the, 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 the reason why the euro presented itself um, quite stable over um, um, the last, especially 10 years of the euro crisis was because inflation was low, um, we were capable, we, in case of the Germans, were capable of importing cheap um, energy, uh, producing and then exporting it, especially um, um, in the, in the um, 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 periphery states, let's say, um, in a quite cheap way, let's say. Um, and um, in addition to that, there was the Euro Central Bank, which uh, European Central Bank, which, which bought um, um, especially assets, um, holding interest rates low, um, for example, um, for, for southern periphery states like Italy, Spain, um, and thus um, allowing them to um, not really working uh, on their business model. Um, and the question has always been over the last 10 years, um, what, if, what if Germany goes into recession, which will happen rather sooner than later? Uh, politicians don't want to hear that question. If you ask that question, let's say something like five years ago or so, um, you were labeled and, uh, well, whatever, um, um, uh, someone who has no clue, if you, if you said, well, it's not just that it's about that we probably see the recession, but also that inflation picks up significantly if the um, ECB continues to um, pump more and more liquidity into the system. Right now, inflation is not picking up because um, the, the um, 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 uh, velocity of the um, um, uh, money, well, it, it, it hasn't significantly increased, but once the market or the, the um, turnover or the um, 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 acceleration of money going around starts to speed up, um, then we, okay, we, are, we are in deep trouble. Now, in addition to that, it wasn't just um, that COVID with the lockdowns and everything um, um, already saw some, some, some impact on the inflation before the invasion of uh, the Ukraine by Russia um, in February, which led um, um, energy explode energy prices explode even more. Um, but there was already inflationary pressure building before the invasion took place. And that was due to the fact that there was uh, less products, which were, um, um, let's say, hunted by more and more money, which was uh, pumped into the economy uh, to, to, to keep it alive, let's say, post uh, um, uh, COVID, the, the pandemic, respectively, especially um, uh, the, the lockdowns. 
So that being said, um, now is um, something which is which is weighing heavily on Germany, especially. So we're we're driving in a recession with high inflation, um, consumer confidence collapsing. Um, 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 very very important um, companies in this case who who. who helped to uh, let Germany prosper, especially um, 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 here, um, um, let, let, let um, the GDP grow, uh, which, which is not the big companies, but it's more like um, Germany is a, is, a, is a country where you find um, specialists, let's say, um, on certain areas, um, which, which help to produce um, parts which are so important for the industry around the globe, in fact. Um, and this is destroyed right now because they're usually very energy in, in, um, intensive. So it's, if, you, if, you, if you make energy more, um, 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 uh, more expensive, the profitability of these businesses um, um, shrinks to an extent, which is now letting uh, these companies just say, okay, we shut down here, we go somewhere else, somewhere where, where um, um, uh, energy is cheaper or is expected to come down um, um, to a level um, which lets us produce um, more profitable in the near term, let's say, on a near um, future again. So long thing short, that's uh, resulting in a decreasing GDP for Germany, which weighs on the euro, which uh, finds its backbone in the German business model, let's say, which then results in the euro devaluing. So if the GDP contracts um, and the underlying central bank has to pump money, uh, more and more money, cheap liquidity into the system um, it's devaluing the currency so you can where you can you can talk about um, a currency of a, of a um, uh, economy for example um, the share the share of an economy is in fact its currency so this is something which is um, um, probably a good way to to put it then and um, so certainly um, countries are looking for a rising GDP and usually, as you can see it here, usually a rising GDP here is a positive sign for the domestic currency as it will lead to make more investors trying to profit from the economic growth and money flowing into um, uh, this respective um, economy. Thus, there's um, um, a higher, let's say, velocity in terms of the money going around, which leads the central bank to raise, um, uh, to, to, to hike interest rates, which means that investors get um, um, a higher yield for the investment in this respective economy beside the economic growth they can profit from. And there is um, um, such a positive cycle which builds itself up and, and lets the um, 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 underlying currency um, increase its value over time. So, and as a result, you can see it here, you have to buy uh, the domestic currency then, which will naturally result in the value of the domestic currency to increase, long thing short. So that's, I mean, it should be clear that this is a very, very important um, 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 economic indicator you should definitely keep an eye on for the reasons just explained. Um, still, by the way, no, not still, but one thing um, I'd like to add here. You probably wonder um, where then, if, if you now next month get the, well, where do you have it here? So Forex calendar, um, I, I just showed you here where to get the GDP print from. Um, the, th the interesting thing is you get already indications on where to, where to expect uh, the next month's GDP number in case of the US especially. Um, so this is what we, what we talk about right now. Um, the reason for that is because um, there's a strong demand for US dollar around the globe due to its reserved currency status and due to the fact um, that right now interest rates are, as we will see in a few seconds, um, um, were pushed up significantly higher by the Fed while other interest rates levels stayed relatively low. This is especially true for the JPY. Look at the chart. You see the chart rising from the lower left to the upper right. This is usually a sign. If you look at J dollar JPY, well, there's obviously a strong demand for the US dollar and you finance it with cheaper liquidity, in this case, cheaper currency, which you find in JPY, for example. But still, um, I recommend you, if you want to get an idea of where we stand, to check out the following website here. So the Atlanta Fat GDP tracker. I will show here or I would share the link. This is a very good question. Um, the question from uh, Phillips, he's asking, during negative growth, do investors start to look for other instruments, say gold or precious metals? 
Um, yes, usually this is an environment in which um, historically these um, asset classes, especially gold, um, is performing very well. Um, that the reason for that, especially in an environment where you have a stagflationary environment, so there you have um, stagnant or negative economic growth, while inflation stays relatively high. Um, to some extent, right now, what we can see is that the um, um, current economic downturn is um, counter or economic downturn is ignored to some extent. Um, and we look to bring down inflation because central banks think that if they bring down inflation, the consumption picks up again. And investors start um, to buy stuff, which is um, then naturally resulting in uh, the economy picking up. Let's put it that way. Um, not really sure if this is going to work. Um, and we don't want to dig too deep into this. I, I, I completely disagree on this. Um, I think the, the main reason for the current um, um, inflationary um, 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 pressure we see building has to do with uh, supply chain issues, especially which were made uh, by politicians right now, um, trying to to somehow explain everything by the Russian invasion in Ukraine. While this is certainly part of um, 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 the reason why inflation picked up over the course of the last month, we could already see this way, way, way before. And the reason for that was the fiscal stimulus after the lockdowns, and this is where everything started. So once you once you cut um, uh, the, the the production and 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 in this case the supply chains, um, it was clear that if you counter um, the downturn, economic downturn, with more liquidity, um, which is um, hunting less products, then it, it's only a matter of time once um, inflation picked up. And that was something we could already see in the second half of 2021. And then it even accelerated more with the invasion of, um, um, of, the, um, of, the, of the Ukraine by Russia. Still, um, what we can certainly um, 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 say is it makes things lots very easy, right? So you can just point your finger to Russia, respectively to, to Vladimir Putin in this case, and say, hey, he's, he's the guy, um, he is uh, responsible for everything. Well, this is just, um, it, it, he's, he's probably part, um, um, and, but he's not the sole reason why this is happening. But coming back to the question, so you have an inflation environment and, and stagflation. And um, now the thing is that if you, once you have um, um, real yields, which are negative in this case, then these precious metals usually tend to perform extraordinarily well. And in my environment or in my um, portfolio right now, for example, I have a, um, a quite high exposure, quite high. It depends on how, how you say high, but 20%. Um, uh, in my portfolio where um, gold and also uh, mining stocks, for example, even though they are not performing that well, you look at them, but if you, if you buy, um, let's say a mining stock, which is the nominated in US dollar, um, potentially not performing well due to the current um, devaluation of gold in US dollar terms. Look at gold in GBP terms, look at gold in euro terms, you will see that's quite stable. Um, then, uh, and, and you have in addition to that and a very energy intensive business. Well, usually these stocks do not perform well, but um, the thing is that um, the, over time, I think this, this bet will play out because um, if there is some kind of devaluation of the US dollar, which we have to expect rather sooner or later because the Fed just can't tighten monetary policy too much because else um, it will completely uh, destroy the US economy, which is right now not really an environment with um, the um, 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 conflict between East and West right now um, getting to a boiling point once again between Russia and the US, respectively the US and the especially China and then Taiwan and so on and so forth. So um, that being said, I expect the Fed rather sooner than later, at least, or let's say probably in the second half of 2023, depending a little on how things develop right now, um, but to, to loosen monetary policy again. This is then resulting in driving yields significantly lower, while in addition to that, inflation won't come down as fast and as quick um, um, to overcome the um, 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 and then dropping yields again, which will result in negative real um, uh, um, um, negative real yields then 
letting gold and, and, and mining stock potentially performing well, outperforming them on a, on a broader scale. And then this is one of the reasons um, why, why I think in such an environment, usually gold and, and precious metals in general usually perform quite, quite well. So coming back to the GDP tracker uh, from, the, from the Atlanta Fed. Um, so what does it do? Well, they, they, take, um, uh, they, they take economic um, numbers and um, they then calculate what, they, what you should expect in terms of economic growth for the upcoming quarter. And uh, so as of September 27th, so quite up to date, they expect for Q3 a 0.3% um, um, increase for economic growth. Let's see if this plays out. Um, we come a long way, let's say. Um, so we had negative economic growth in the first two quarters. Um, and now we had already a print of over 2% to be expected after um, employment data and so on and so forth, retail sales, and um, was a solid number. And then it continually dropped. And um, that being said, it's not unlikely, let's say. So the next update will be today. There is a, there's a serious chance that we get a third quarter of negative economic growth in the U.S., um, which is then certainly um, 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 a sign that the U.S. finds itself in a recession. So, um, by the way, one second, before we start with interest rate decisions, and by the way, here, this little chart, I just have to update... I just have to update um, my chart. Today, um, in fact... I'm, I'm not focusing on marketplace, but after yesterday, um, I'd really like to focus on uh, Nike for, for a potential earnings play after we finish the webinar. And I just have to write down some, some numbers so that I have everything in place. And now let's see if we make it back above 85, by the way. So 85 is the level. So wow, quite, quite weak if I, if I look here at, at the chart. Um, but let's come back to interest rates. So this is what we want to focus on. Interest rate decisions. So interest rates, and when it comes to interest rates, we speak about the potential yield um, an investor or a buyer, especially of a currency here, can expect to earn, respectively, has to pay if he wants to borrow money, for example, from a bank. Um, and if a central bank decides to increase interest rates, for example, during times of significant economic growth, or probably we have to add this here, or if inflation pressure is building and we have to fight inflation, um, because you can expect, or you can, what you can say is that yields are in fact the price of money, which means um, it's the price tag you put on money. And uh, the, the higher the, the price for the money, the more attractive it is to keep the money in the bank and to earn the interest on the money. So to fight inflation and get the um, um, velocity of the um, um, uh, money out of the cycle, in fact, and, and decrease the, the, the speed which, um, with which money is um, chasing goods, um, well, you, you, you hike interest rates to motivate people to keep the money in the bank and not go after buying the next pair of shoes or whatever it might be, or um, say, well, I need uh, three different streaming services, or um, let's go to a restaurant and have some fun because money is cheap and whatever it might be. Um, so you keep the money in the bank, you're safe. Um, if, if, if the money is um, um, attractive to keep it in the bank, if you want to get inflation going, as we have seen over the course of the last years, well, then you make um, 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 money keeping in the bank as unattractive as possible. You, um, in fact, punish people to keep the money in the bank. And you want to let them, um, 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 you, you want to see money um, um, flowing around and accelerating um, in terms of, 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 the, of the ongoing velocity of the money, so to make sure that inflation starts to pick up. The only problem with inflation is that's kind of like a. Um, 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 you probably remember. Oh, you, you probably remember those glass bottles um, with ketchup, right? So if you if you have French fries and then you started to to shake these because um, the, the the gas bo the, the, the 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 bottle and, and the ketchup within it, it just didn't want to come out, and you wanted to have some ketchup on your on your French fries. The only problem was that um, once you shaked it long enough. Um, then you have like a flutch and then you have a big chunk of, of ketchup on your, on your French fries. This is like inflation is working. So it's not picking up. And once it picks up, 
well, it's too late and it's just um, going flush. Like, so this is a probably a good, good way to put it, um, um, how to get inflation going and what's right, right now. But what's more interesting probably, and, and from a theoretical standpoint, especially important is like where and how do infl um, um, central banks find out what's the right yield level? What's the right interest rate? And there we have something we call the Taylor rule, which delivers a theoretical idea of a fair yield level. So what, what you can see here is, Obviously, that's a quite old chart, um, but a screenshot I, I, I like to use for this um, purpose, because we've seen already from 2016, 2017 onwards, there should have been an increase in the interest rate around the um, um, around the um, 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 ECB, in fact, because from the Taylor rule perspective, given economic growth, employment numbers we had, and so on and so forth, it was um, um, it was okay, uh, or we, we should have seen um, an increase in um, um, in the in the yields, and uh, we haven't. So we lacked already, and then we saw the COVID pandemic, and we kept interest. Rate, let's put it simply: we kept interest rates for too low for too long. And um, now we are facing uh, the, the issue with chip supply chain issues and so on and so forth, um, that, that um, um, inflation is starting to pick up while we can't really um, increase interest rates to get inflation down. Um, yeah, long thing short. So this is this is some um, um, Taylor rule from a, from a theoretical perspective, um, how central banks get a fair value of, um, 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 of, of interest rates and based on which they usually should build their um, um, uh, economic decisions in this case. Most of the time they um, um, differ the, what, 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 what we can see in terms of a central bank. But the main reason for that, especially when it comes to the ECB is um, that the euro is not an economic um, um, currency. So it's not economy based, but it's a political currency. Um, and there's, there's a long history to this. Um, something we, you can read in several books. There's, there's great literature on that. Um, um, I'm, I'm not really sure, but I think there was also a guy who wrote a book in the early 90s or so, which was so critical about the euro and its conception um, uh, that it wasn't even allowed um, to be translated into German. I'm not really sure how it, what, what its name it is, um, uh, but long thing short. So it's a political construct. And thus, what we can currently see is that there's a co complete um, 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 difference, let's say between what makes economic sense and what we get to see um, um, in terms of the of the of the yields and right now also when when looking for example at the rhetoric being used from ecb um, um central bankers in general uh, you have the feeling that they completely lost control and that they don't um, um care about the, the money anymore so i so really don't care um and this is also something which is kind of irritating and potentially already i'm, I'm showing that these um um that this knowledge is nice to have, to know what should be the, the, the real um, interest rate or the theoretical value, let's say, or um, um, what is a fair yield here um, based on certain um, economic input parameters, um, but something which is just purely theoretical, not more, not less. Um, let's have a look here at em employment numbers. And uh, let me just check the questions here. Um, yeah, well, sure, yes. Um, so the question is, do you have any idea as why the bank, um, in this case, the central bank, the European central bank, the ECB, did not use the Taylor, uh, Taylor rule years earlier? Um, for sure, because um, if they used it, um, they would have crushed, especially um, uh, the economy from Italy, respectively, from, from Spain, from Portugal, from Greece. Um, so that that's the that's the main reason for that. So um, 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 you you have kind of a like... Um, overall idea on what the European economy is doing. And while, for example, especially Germany could have afforded a way higher um, um, interest rate and thus a higher um, um, euro in, in, in value terms, um, we have we would have already seen uh, difficulties when it came to France. Uh, so France would have had um, um, difficulties with a euro above 110, I think. Um, uh, I think Germany would have easily um, 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 be fine with a euro above 120, 125, 130 even. Um, 
while other um, um, European countries like Italy, Spain um, couldn't have afforded that um, um, this, this, this um, um, level, especially from an export perspective. And that being said, and by um, um, uh, keeping the economies alive, let's say, um, and, 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 and um, letting them letting them prosper and um, hopefully let people live a good life there. And thus you have, um, 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 let's say, um, to some kind um, um, silence among the people and, and not the people standing up uh, because they can't afford their daily lives anymore. Um, it was, it was um, the way to go for, for politicians within the EU. And what you can right now see is um, that um, this is the catch-up effect. Like, well, now you can't bring the catch-up back into the bottle. So it's game over. And, and you see the political uh, landscape to see um, um, a sharp shift into um, extremism. May it be the left, may it be the right, but um, there's, this is, this is a, a, the, the reason um, for the, the current developments in the political lit landscape, and, and I, I also see this um, um, happening potentially here and over here in Germany, um, is due to this, this um, uh, yeah, <laughs> having, having a currency which has a, um, uh, which has a, which has a um, 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 political um, um, political value, let's say, um, and it's not um, economy based. So, um, so I think this is this is a very simple way to put it. Um, and, and in fact, and in fact, um, I, I have to hurry up a little. In fact, because else I I, I won't get to through the through the slides. But um, I think the main reason for that is especially to 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 keep people silent for a long time and 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 give them the um, um, impression everything will be fine. The euro is a big success story. Well, it's not. And it was. It, the concept of the euro um, is a is a great idea, but um, how it was built and and, and what it's based on is like a pure catastrophe. Um, that's just that that's my personal opinion, but I I um I think um there's many people out there who have way more knowledge about this um and who probably agree with me on that. Um, now heads of level heads heads of level. Let's have a look at employment rate and unemployment rate. Um, we, in fact, can go quite quickly through this because we want to dig deeper um, into this topic with the non-farm payrolls next week. So unemployment rate is the number of unemployed people from the workforce in any country. It's an important indicator, certainly, which uh, should be interpreted very carefully as it's one of the main drivers of economic growth and thus price movement in the underlying currency. So usually you will say, well, if unemployment rate is dropping, an economy is potentially um, picking up speed under normal terms um, because you see that um, 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 eco economic activity is picking up because companies are hiring people. If the numbers are going up, well, this is mostly due to the fact that companies are um, scaling down. Yesterday, for example, Facebook, I think, um, made up made a platforms, made an announcement that um, they will be, I think it was Zuckerberg himself who said this um, to, to um, 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 his, 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 his um, um, employees, that uh, they, they plan to reduce the workforce, which will naturally, due to the recession, which is forming at the horizon, inflation picking up and so on and so forth, very difficult environment, growth is um, slowing down. So you can't afford, um, um, let's say, unproductive people anymore um, if you want to keep um, 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 a profitable business and and thus you have to fire these people which is usually happening in an environment where you see a these um, um, deceleration probably even a slowing and negative um, um, economic growth in this case and um, so as you can see rising unemployment rate potentially means that the economy slows down and vice versa and one of the most important news releases in the FX market is known as the non-farm payrolls this is the event which we will focus on next week on Friday and we will get all details on and um, usually it's published every first Friday of the month so next week is the first Friday so no surprise there um, and it should be considered as one of the most important economic indicators from forex traders after the GDP and interest rate decisions and there's a, a, an example it's a quite old one I think it's um, several years ago <laughs> you can see it in 117 um, so it's, it's, it's been a while that we've uh, uh, traded here in EURUSD I, I just um, um, took a screenshot back then and give this as an um, idea on what volatility you expect you can see here that um, we saw push of 100 pips um, range around the release of the um, um, non-farm payrolls back then and um, this is usually something you also should expect in the current environment with all um, um, 
yeah, market participants now focusing on these numbers, especially since it may or it has a very important impact on what the, um, in this case, Federal Reserve, in case of the non-fund payrolls, will do next. Um, but all details around this next week. Let's um, focus here um, on inflation rates now. Um, and inflation rate is a term used in order to express the rate of change in prices of goods and services in a country. So there's three um, different CPI numbers um, you should keep an eye on, in fact. Um, it's an overview of how inflation rates um, 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 you can find in the economic calendar. So first of all, there's the CPI. This is the Consumer Price Index, which is published month on a monthly basis, representing the rate of change in a basket of goods and services that are bought by consumers. The problem with this is um, um, there's lots of manipulation going on, especially right now with politicians seeing that inflation is picking up. So how get how, how do you get inflation down? Well, um, let's put several other goods into the basket here, which are not that, let's say, um, <clears throat> How can I say I'm um, price sensitive? Um, so, and this is usually taking place, in fact. So, um, I'm not really sure about the numbers, um, but I think um, if we take the same basket of goods from the early 90s and look at it today, inflation would be above 20%, probably even above 30%. Um, so just, just to get an idea, um, this is not just true for the US, but also for the Eurozone. Um, then we have the core CPI. This is an interesting number because it's the same number as the CPI, but it's the adaptation of um, uh, excluding volatile goods like food and energy, especially right now. So that's one of the reasons why looking at the core CPI makes more sense. So if you have a CPI print of let's say 10% due to the current rise in um, um, food and energy prices, well, um, and the core CPI, um, is significantly below that. Well, you can see, okay, this is the main driver. And it's, um, it's a number which you can try to tackle, producing more food, more goods in this context, or find ways to deliver more energy to the people. So there's more supply, usually this is driving down prices. Um, the problem is if you have the CPI at let's say 10%, and then you have the core CPI, let me just, by the way, let me just have a look here. Let's take a, a real world example. So this is today. Let's filter this out and let's have a look here at the euro. We know that today inflation rate was um, published. And as you can see here, so um, there you can see it. Inflation rate is 10%. And core inflation rate year on year is 4.8%. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. So the main drivers, you have all goods included like food and energy. Core inflation, you take these out because they are very volatile in a price um, development, which means like, well, if you want to get this problem under control, find ways to drive down energy prices. How you do this? Well, find other ways um, um, here than to import um, energy at an elevated level from, from resources um, like the US, for example, where you pay for, for LNG um, way more than if you get it from somewhere else, wherever the somewhere might be. Let's don't let get too, too political here. But this is also a discussion we are currently having here in Germany. Um, and, and so um, the core CPI is a very important number uh, in this context, especially in the current environment. And, and you should keep, keep an eye on that. Because if you see that inflation is picking or ticking lower, and you see especially core inflation coming um, significantly lower, this could be um, um, a clear sign that we are cooling down um, um, inflation wise. Um, while on the other hand, if CPI stays high and then core inflation takes up too, this is usually a sign that we haven't yet seen the peak potentially, which means then that there will be more restrictive monetary policy approach from in this case, the central bank. Most of the time, when once we look here at these numbers, we'll look at the at the Fed then in this case, and then we have also the PPI, the producer price index, which measures the measures the rate of change in prices of inputs and outputs of goods at factory gates. Um, very important a number, especially here in Germany, because numbers here are uh, picked up significantly. I think we are we are at fifty percent year on year or something like that. And why is this an important number? Well, because if a producer has to pay a higher price for uh, the goods he needs to um, build whatever product and then sell it to a uh, sell it to a client client respectively consumer well usually expect a pickup in prices there too but now we reached a point where producers can't forward um, these elevated prices 
um, directly to the consumers anymore, which goes directly into their um, uh, gross margin, which means if they can't produce the product profitable anymore under the current um, um, circumstances, as well, they shut down their, um, their, their company or they shut down their, their factory, whatever it might be, which means, well, unemployment rate will go up because more people will be unemployed. If unemployment goes down while um, uh, goes up while companies can't produce anymore, well, let's go here to GDP growth rate. Well, GDP growth rate will decelerate. Then you have to tackle it with decreasing interest rates. Only problem with that is that inflation picks up as you can see it in, in the current environment, which makes it very difficult to cut rates, which shows why the current environment which we find ourselves in um, is, a, is a vicious one, let's say. Um, and you can see um, these numbers, these numbers, I already showed you where to find them. Let me just, uh, oh wait, by the way, I think this is the last slide. Oh no, here's the, here's the way to, to display them in your chart. Um, that's probably a nice way to put it. Um, but to sum this up, you can see that the numbers I presented to you here, which I am currently, currently, but all in all, all the time, in fact, sometimes more, um, um, sometimes less, right now, even more um, due to the um, um, macro environment in which we find ourselves in, um, they play with each other. So if you see inflation picking up to an extent which is directly beating into the gross margin of a producer here, um, or right now inventories shooting through the roof, in case of Nike, for example, and they can't sell their goods, um, and now they have to, to give out incentives and, 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 and cut prices massively, that directly affects their gross margin, which means that they're less profitable. And if um, um, their they're, they're lesser profitability reaches a point where they have to fire people, this will bring inflation rates, especially if it's not just Nike related, but every other company like Facebook, also advertisement and all that stuff and marketing, um, whatever it might be. Picking up inflate, um, 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 unemployment rate will pick up, which means this um, will directly beat also in the overall sentiment. If you see such an environment, and I as a as an employer slash as an entrepreneur um, plan to to build something, well, and I find an environment in which people are very skeptical and and very pessimistic about the the future prospect. I look at the numbers. I see unemployment rate going up. I mean, there's plenty of people I can now hire for my business um, opportunity, but with with thus, um, with, with such uh, high energy prices, especially, why should I build a business? Let's say, in, in, in case of a German now, why should I build a business in Germany? I can go everywhere else. So, especially with my product, so there's there's no real um, 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 there's no real um, advantage uh, right now building something in this case in Germany. But the same might be true in other areas, in fact. And so you can see that this is like a um, um, it's it, it's like a, a whole system which is working with each other, and um, so. So I use these numbers to get an overall idea and then build, build my, my trading hypothesis, in fact, around this. Um, beside, and this is the great thing here about the um, um, uh, Supreme add-on, I get this plate here. For example, that was a chart. You can see it here, uh, which I took on a Thursday. Why do I know that? Well, because you can see here jobless claims. These are usually um, published every Thursday. So uh, that, that's one, one of the um, 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 uh, dotted lines you can see here. So this is a four-hour chart. Um, you can directly head into um, um, the lower time frames, and then you see it even more um, brought down, let's say, uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the numbers here in this case, and you have it directly displayed in your chart. And you're not um, or less likely um, very surprised by a spike on the upside, respectively on the downside. And um, so... That's it around today. Um, if you liked what you saw, if you are now watching the recording on YouTube, please leave a thumb up here. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them um, in the um, uh, box below. Um, what else? Join me next week. Yeah, join me next week with the non-farm payrolls. Um, you can register on the website, admiralmarkets.com. Um, and um, if you like to reach out to admirals, ask questions around opening an account, so on and so forth, feel free to reach out to admirals directly. And that's it from my end. So have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. Talk to you again next week with the non-farm payrolls. And uh, happy trading. See you. Bye-bye.